then you can apply the, the excess stuff on it. And creatively, don't let the teardrop shape dictate what it is you're really putting on there. A lot, you know, I'm sure a lot of people like use a needle tool for doing designs and stuff like that. I hate the needle tool. It's a dull pencil, and you get these nice, deep carving lines, just like in leather work. You know, you've already done leather work with or not leather work, but soft slabs and hard slabs, to where if you kind of do this calligraphy kind of line to it, and kind of press one area, but soft on that other side of the edge, never straight on, you get an ambiance of line. I also, one of the things I do with people to start getting a surface design that's on the three-dimensional speaking level of stuff. If you carve in and add on, you just create three dimensions on the surface, which actually gives your piece a little more ambiance. And it you know, even if you're going to do just an abstract design. Now, uh, so melody to have everybody think of their spirit animal. I, I try to think that I'm primal because all this analytical thinking I do seems to paral paralyze me. So I spend more time thinking than playing around and enjoying life. So, and I don't know what to do. That's why I do art too. My, my liability is my asset. You know, I can all of a sudden just take anything and if I focus on it, impractically I can change it up. It, it may be impractical, but it becomes a piece of art. So, but for these the missile, there's a little simple concept we need to kind of keep. You already know about the teardrop shape. Now, a lot of, a lot of my original whistles are just a circle. And they've got a kind of a short spectrum of sound, but they also have a hollow sound. They have a primal sound. Right? So you start stretching that out. And you get shapes. Anything, has anybody ever heard the orcarina also called the sweet potato? Yeah. Yes. Right? It's just a potato shape. It's got a tapered shape. So it's not like tapered. Shape. But for the most part, let's say a lizard. You, know, you can do a shape like this, but your sound's going to be a little off. Right? Because they just don't have this bottom line form over function, function over form. I prefer us to maintain being primal. I prefer, uh, prefer us to maintain being sculpture and then hope that they whistle. Right? So we get something that looks more ancient, something that so we're more connected to our ancestry and all that stuff. So it's all the tie in of music, as much as the tie in, it starts dictating to us what we want to play. Right? So if I have one of these tuned up to the Western chromatic scale, you can come over and play it, and even if you're not musically inclined, for some reason your brain wants to find a song that you already know, right? And then, if anything, you know, and then I'm kind of generalizing a little bit, but and then if you think, oh, it's far eastern, eastern uh, music or American Indian music, that's just the pentatonic scale. But sometimes. I prefer being consciously ignorant. I know how to tune these up to the Western chromatic scale, but at the same time, I don't want to play Mary Had a Little Lamb or When the Saints Come March. <laughs> you know, um, and my dad was a music instructor, and I just always, always just went ahead and played with art because, as much as I think I can dance, I had a hard time carrying a tune a little bit, and everybody else in the family played instruments. My dad was the, um, okay, I'm going to brag a little bit. My dad was the, the band director for the Pasadena City College Rose Parade Band. And how he got that job was 25 years he won sweet states over and over and over with the Arcadia High School Band, right? So it's like, I used to think my dad was famous. I'd see his picture in the local newspaper all the time. Like, yeah, my dad. My dad's famous. <laughs> <laughs> my dad said, yeah, that's, yeah, that's my dad. Okay. But at the same time, we kept putting me on the trombone. Not the trombone, that was my brother. Put me on the trumpet, but you know, I got kind of this over, over big jaws and lips, so he put me on the baritone, which was easier to play. But I always had class uh, seat C, which is like, you know, we don't want you playing too loud, Mark, in the orchestra, right? <laughs> but at the same time, I could turn around, I could turn around and just all of a sudden make something, you know? Um, in kindergarten, here, I'll give you an example. Kindergarten, um, you know, a little more ADD thing again. Like, all the girls on the bus were having a spelling bee in kindergarten. Now, I knew Hand Christian and Anderson songs, and I could sing those, but nobody wanted to hear them. Um, but the kids were having spelling bees, like spell boo, spell zoo, and like for some reason I couldn't remember how to spell zoo, not to mention I didn't have that much spelling, right? 
So I felt a little like, like lesser than in kindergarten, but I did know how to draw. And um, in, in kindergarten, before, before being let out for school, we'd also do some drawings and then have a little nap before we go, okay, everybody get up, the bus is here, blah, blah, blah. So I was a little bit defiant. I drew a, a full-figured naked woman. I put it in the box without my name on it. I thought, oh, someone's going to get in trouble. Someone's going to get in trouble. And of course, I'm like, here we go. She's pulling it out of the box. Here's Timmy's. He did a stick pig here. Here's Jessica. She did, what is this, Jessica? An apple? You know, and then she picks up the, the female figure, very robust. And um, I'm like, oh, someone's going to get in trouble. Oh, I did nasty in class. I did nasty in class. Who do? Right? She goes, oh, my God. This is absolutely beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Who did this? I stood right up me. <laughs> right? So I think, as much as I knew I was liked art, but it was my little secret thing, art, all of a sudden I realized, oh, okay, there's, a, there's where my ego and narcissism can come in, and it's like, this is where I belong. It's my art. So, you know, from there on in. Or how about when teachers used to give you an assignment? Like, if everybody, um, if everybody uh, draws a good picture, they don't get to do homework, so I would draw a good picture. You know what homework was? Another picture to draw. And I was just like, oh, that's no fair. <laughs> she go, Mark, you don't have to do homework, it's another picture. No, I want to do a picture. So, you know, somewhere deep inside of me, I've always had this need for setting little things on fire and making things as well. <laughs> um, anyhow, there's a teardrop shape in this. Some of you have a shape like this, right? There's actually a false wall in here, so I can have a, a broader sound. And remember I was telling you about um, the Western Chromatic Scale. I, I was tuning them up, and all of a sudden, the function of trying to get it to tune real well kind of like made me drop the idea of, of doing more sculpture and more figurative and you know Peruvian-looking stuff and all that kind of stuff. So I just started putting a big hole also so I could get inside and clean up and do a little better cleaning up so I could get a better sound. So with the big hole, instead of it sounding like your recorder that you used to play in third grade, does everybody remember the recorders in yeah. the third grade? Yeah. Well, 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 it, it's all the same songs that everybody plays. So instead, you have something that's a little more primal. Mm -hmm. And this one kind of, in my opinion, has some spirit to it, because I can actually play my hand out here. My brother's all, oh, no, you're doing this inside there. And I said, no. You do this. You put your hand out here and do this, right? So I'm going to put my hand out here, and you can hear a little bit of vibration going on. So if there was a bunch of smoke coming out here, you would see a plume going towards my hand. And I'm still putting back pressure back on here, creating the sound to go lower again. So, so what are your spirit animals? Everybody got an idea? Not no. No. <laughs> sort of. Okay, I'm gonna put everybody in a trance. Just kidding. You know that the shapes also lend themselves to just doing abstract designs across the surface. You know because wind. You know a lot of this has to do with wind. So you could think about doing something abstractly with wind, or the cloud, or the water, or anything like that. So I want, I'm going to go around now, and I'm going to feel people's pieces and start kind of mapping out a little bit where I think people should put their mouthpieces, but I'm not going to say anything yet. Um, I'm going to do some more drawings on the board in a few minutes. Actually, I would like to see you guys actually turning these into their sculptures first before we actually make them whistle, because all of a sudden the whole design of trying to get it whistle will take take over and you'll, everybody will have these basketball shapes. Um, so go ahead and start sculpting these up a little bit. Um, yep. Can you say something that you're going to bring to the fish but I do the fish? The fish? Do it, cut, cut yourself a teardrop shape. Alright, cut yourself a teardrop shape or a long fish and do a trout or even do a, a, an ink. An angel fish shape. You can put a little bit of the where the fins might go in the profile. Put two, have two of them. Yeah, just get two pieces like that. Better than a little leather part and cut out the fish shape. Nice flat pancake shape. And then we're going to go ahead and make it shape. And then we're going to stick them together. Kind of like what you do with your flat 
shape, and we're going to curve them, and we're going to put them in. Anybody having trouble with um, wanting to do something different other than a shape? You can do two flat shapes. You can do two flat shapes that match, like puzzle pieces. And then when they're leather hard, you can start to curve them and make them bowl out. And then slip and score them together and pinch them together. And then you have your shape. So they, a lot of people are It's a lot of art, but they know how to pinch shapes. Okay. Does already see how somebody doing the two pitch pop things? Yeah. Uh, they know how to play. Uh, you going to go for the skull? I am too. Oh. Oh. Don't start this part yet. Go ahead and smooth that down and pull that off. Yeah, I'm going to, for right now, I'm going to draw, I'm going to spend some time drawing specific little things that we're going to be doing to making the mouthpiece. Um, like I said, I want everybody kind of just go ahead and start sculpting. Make that figure, make that skull, make that face. You can go ahead and push in eyes. You know, push in eyes, just don't pop all the way through. Remember, I want you kind of like pushing in and carving and then also adding stuff on. Um, otherwise, they will look like we're just putting thumbprints for eyes and doohickeys for noses. Um, oh, that one be good. Here with the, with the faces and all that stuff. You try to put a, a mouthpiece in the back right there. It doesn't like the whistle this way. If you have a teardrop shape somewhere near the bigger end of the form is where the, the mouthpiece has to be. Otherwise, I've tried them in the back in different ways. I've tried to gorge it a big long uh, spout and then open up down here. They almost whistle, but they don't have a very big effect. Kind of start off with where it expands real quick and then tapers down into, into smaller amount of it. Okay, I'm going to erase the top parts right here. Look up here for a second. The mouthpieces that you put on, imagine you've got that one flat spot. But usually I make people make a flat spot so they can actually have a landmark on the piece that they can see what's going on. Okay? Here's your look for. You want to put a piece of clay on here. That pretty much, this is on the fundamental level, total fundamental level, just so that you can have your landmarks, like I was going to say. Right? So you have a flat spot here. You also want, a lot of people think they're having their mouthpiece that they just put on. They think it's flat right there, but it's not. It's actually pointing up in the air. And if we put a hole right here for whistling, it doesn't want to whistle. All the air is going to want to go inside. Bottom line is, you need a perpendicular area where air is going to get split off. However, when you have a big bulbous piece and it doesn't have a flat spot, really all you're doing is tilting it and creating an X. Right? Because it's still perpendicular. So, I'm going to demonstrate on, my, on the big whistle. I'm going to get it whistling and you're going to see what I do with the popsicle stick and then I'm going to have all of you get busy doing it. Some of you whistle, some of you won't, and I'll do my running around again. So, let me see here if I can get a good drawing. Okay, now we've got solid clay, high okay. Solid clay right here. Now, I've already got one little problem going on here. Right? I'm going to put my popsicle stick and usually I've gone back and forth. A lot of times I'll try to get people to find the area. Actually, we're going to do it this way here. The first thing you'll do is find where this wall is here. You're going to put your false mouthpiece on. And this wall right here, this perpendicular wall, this one right here. See, if I were to draw a straight line, see how this one goes back a little bit? Mm -hmm. That'll stop the whistle from whistling. What we really want is this to go smooth down in. However, we still have to find a hole right here. There's, if we, I'm gonna, I'll go around and say, push your needle tool in and see if you can find right on the edge of the negative cavity and the edge of the clay where the mouthpiece is. So I'll have some people put their needle tool here. There's too much space right here. Then I'll have some people put their needle tool in. The bottom line is you can put it in at any angle and find it. And there's their needle tool sitting in here. All right, and pull this out. There's a hole right there. And then you take the drill bit. And you 
you drill right here and make a hole. We're still a negative cavity, but because we're clay, it's not wood. It's like, oh, the hole's in the wrong place. You can just take this whole drill bit and move it back a little bit and maybe even have it have an angle towards the mouthpiece, which will make end up making this area go flat pretty much. Go flat. It's got to slope down like a like a ski slope. It's got to go down, or it can actually, some of us have narrower pieces, it can go straight into the piece. But if anything goes backwards and has to come forward inside, it's not going to whistle unless you have your mouthpiece at a really hard angle. So now we've got a hole here. Let's see if I can raise it down. It doesn't look so crazy. We don't want our holes too big. If they get too big, you end up you're losing all your breath just to make a hole. <laughs> so now you've got this edge in here. Depending on how thick you are, some of you may be real thick. It's like, oh my gosh, we're going to have to like be blindly digging some of that stuff out. So now, we put a popsicle stick in there that I've sharpened for you guys that has a taper. Let me erase this real quick. Remember this part too. No matter how narrow your mouthpiece is, if it's perfectly parallel inside, to play a, just a simple little song, you're going to lose all your breath. So, remember this. That mouthpiece, this is like the close-up version. Top tip of stick makes a little bit of this. I've actually tapered them a little bit, so they do this. Take that This one straight. This one angle. Depending on how oh, nice you want your air to be slightly getting narrower, the air passage to be slightly getting narrower before it exits out here. So now I'm going to draw that one. This is a little more microsurgery now when you go to play with these pop sticks. Okay, we've got... Okay, you notice how I wedged that out probably too much just to amplify what I was talking about? So there's your mouthpiece. And then we have to do a little bit of shaping of this. Usually you can shape this area with the pop, not the popsicle stick or the popsicle stick on um, the drill bit. And we need to make this wet. Make a sharp little edge in here. So now, are we kind of start, starting to look like one of those little like plastic whistles a little bit? Okay. Bottom line is the air which has a different color popsicle or shop here. Air's got to be able to hit this split up, and in this area, I usually do a little extra trick. I make sure that this ends up being more shallow in here, maybe a little thicker right here, or I paddle this area in more, just to make sure that this shelf in here, the slope, the ski slope, actually does its thing. So now the air hits here, and this air has to drop, and do it swirling here, and this one does it swirling here. Now we got an abstract paint. Um, does everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything I should erase on here so that you can still see? That, um, it's a little muddy now that I've started using my hands to erase stuff. Mark. Bottom line is, is that air needs to split up and out the hole and needs to be able to go down without any imperfections in its way going down. Yes? How are we going to realize how thick or how thin our wall is and the angle once this thing is enclosed. Yes. How are we going to know exactly how thick it is or where the once you put a hole, is? Once you put a hole in the top, right. you'll get an idea. Now, a lot of what accidentally, a lot of what people start happening is they focus on the hole and this area gets too deep to where it's way down here and they got everything right. But the hole is so deep to try to be whistling, you end up either having to totally really free flatten this, or take the drill bit, put it in there, mess your area up a little bit, and squish all the clay back up, then push it back down, you've created a wedge already. Now, I've done it this way, visually, diagram uh, with a diagram. Now I'm going to be doing it on my piece over here. Um, take a moment and I'll go through all this that I just wrote. Usually I only do it one time and then I run around and try to make everybody's whistles for them. 
Um, I'm going to try it a little different this way. If I reiterate only twice, I do know if I reiterate three times, all of a sudden it dispels everything, everything I said. <laughs> I wish I actually had a lot of fish with this. Because these guys are harder to do it too. I've had people in the past go, oh, you do it with molds, it's not all handled. You know what, I built them. I built it first. Right. I built it a long time ago, this baby face, a while back ago. It's like, okay, what? Well, I noticed that in the ceramic industry, one of the things that actually carries the craft ceramic industry is dollar making. Right? And I always thought everybody thought of maybe I was a little bit weird, but I thought it was really weird all through the Bible Belt, but a whole lot of people making porcelain dolls. And it felt creepy to me. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make my own dolls. Right? So I, I made baby love. Uh, I made baby love. And baby love was also for I was in a broken relationship and I felt like a baby. Didn't know what to make. Had writer's block. Baby block. Writer's block, baby's block. So I made baby block. And now I turn him into baby blue. I give him antlers and he's my little woodland creature. I totally got that. What's that? I could, I could totally see that. <laughs> and you notice how like I could take anything from anywhere and make a story out. <laughs> that's, the a, that's the ADD in me. Um, so I made a mold, right? I push this together, I put clamps around it, and I build inside here. But because I've got too much, two negative cavities in here, I've got this chin area, when I build all, all inside here, I also build another piece of clay that comes off of here and closes this down into a teardrop shape. So, right about here, there's a wall in there. Right? And with that big hole, you can kind of see it. So I've closed it up. <laughs> um, I'm surprised it was whistling. So I have that teardrop shape in there because I want at least a, a wider spectrum of that really low sound I have. Um, and then I just do the baby face. And I like that whole idea of the baby face. Now I can start with something fresh and innocent and turn it into a skull. Right? And for the Renaissance Fair, I was also doing monkeys, and I came up with my little spiel that between birth and death, we act like monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> There's always comedy to go with my surround. Uh, uh, let me get to this part. I thought I brought my slip in. Right, let me put this over here. I saw it somewhere. It's over there, Mark. What's that? It's on the corner, your slip. Oh, uh, not that I use very much of this, but, but it comes in handy. Um, and I haven't seen too many people using too much water. Here. I try to stay away from water too much because things get soupy and muddy and gooey and they change shape and then you don't have control over it. You should be able to build everything with just whatever moisture is in the clay unless it's too hot of a day. They've been trained. What's that? They've been trained not to use much water. I moved somebody's water away from them earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that again? Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope it's ready to. I kind of made this one fast. I made the other one fast, and then when I opened up the mold, the baby face was upside down. So. Uh, you should have kept it. No, I did keep it. I did keep it. <laughs> I don't know. Sneaking up behind me. No details yet, because I'm probably going to squish and hold and play with this one. Quick little jolt of room temperature coffee. <laughs> oh, I forgot the camera. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see it on YouTube. What's that? You'll, You'll see it on YouTube. Make sure you show me the editing version, okay? <laughs> <laughs> usually, yeah, usually it's something I've said that I've been barely actually later on I see it and I go, oh my god. Well, I come across this clay. For some reason it's absolutely forgiving. Has any ever anybody ever put clay together and thought they put it together well enough and it falls apart later or blows apart in the kiln? This stuff, for this amador clay, for some reason, you can just barely stick it together, and it'll, it'll, it'll stick together. Laguna or Aardvark? 
Mm -hmm. I forget which one it is. I think it's hardware. No, it's hardware. Is it? Yeah, hardware. Right. Yeah. Someone want to get me a paddle? Okay. <laughs> What's his name? What's the young kid's name? Oh, Cooper. 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 Cooper Union. I always have to. Thank you, Cooper. Now I got the triangle shape over there. Don't see that triangle shape I made over there? No. Okay. Still has to be nice and curved at the bottom. Right. And this one always fools me too, because as much as I think I have it at a strong enough angle, it turns out I don't have it at a strong enough angle all the time. So when I, now I've been learning my little lesson with these. When I put them down, I make sure I have that angle good enough. Try to make it go fast. Sometimes, sometimes they whistle right away. And sometimes it's like, oh my god, everything looks just perfect. What I assume is going on on the inside, I'm sure, is just well. And then I go ahead and mess it up. I'll send it a whistle. Some of you actually will have yours looking like it can't whistle at all, and it will whistle just fine. But you'll just notice that you just need to refine some of the details in there. Yes. You're very popular. Uh, I've been really harassed by Western Dental. <laughs> oh. Seriously, they're like they, they're they, they're like they're non-stop. A hundred dollars a tooth. It's like, okay, but it's in the middle of the two. I have to pay two hundred dollars for one cavity. <laughs> and any time I've ever been to them, for some reason, their stuff falls out a couple months later. Is that right? What's that? Yeah. Right. Can you test whistling before bisque fire? What's that? Does it make no uh, whistle before firing? Yeah. If the cleaner oh. the whistling I can get before firing, the better. Because even ah. because it is high fire, some of them change shape just a little bit. Yeah. And I go and buy uh, diamond file, diamond bit files, which sounds real expensive, but they're cheap as heck at Harbor Freight. Mm -hmm. Four bucks. What's that? Four bucks yeah. for a pack of six. <coughs> a while back ago, I was trying to. I don't know. They just didn't catch on, and they're a little difficult to mess with. You know, your old Coke bottle. That's all this is. Is a Coke bottle. Okay. You blow across the top. Mm -hmm. So I started putting holes on the on the coke bottle and a hole on the side and where it dips. So it's like an ocarina, but a lot of them would shatter easily if I, you know, bottle, and or to try to color them and all that kind of stuff, they would sound great. But because they're already a disposable bottle, people only saw a novelty in them. And I tried dressing them up and doing more things to it, and I thought, you know, all right, just go back to the clay. <laughs> but I liked the idea of turning something that, you know, the, um, the Coca-Cola bottles, um, from Mexico aren't redeemable for California really? for California uh -huh. redemption. Uh -huh. So it's mm -hmm. like it says non-refundable. No, it's refundable because you know, I was doing what I could to sell some of them for the most I could get was maybe about 15 bucks because everybody still kept seeing it as a novelty. Remember in the 70s when people used to take Coke bottles and they would put them in a kiln and stretch the necks mm -hmm. and turn them into flower bases? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of these people weren't born yet. <laughs> really? <Yes. laughs> really? 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 <laughs> Including me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Cross your feet. I used to get a little slower. I just take my time with these. Because I want to play the play matching the other way. You weren't having a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you. <laughs> Like I said, I usually wait for things to kind of do dry up and match up. So sometimes I'm playing over here, I'm playing over there, going and doing something else because I want these to match and settle up a little bit. Does that one have the false wall in it already? What's that? Does that one already yes. have the false wall? Where, which direction is the false wall? Um, from where the mouthpiece is, I need it to be bigger and then slowly move into smaller or just be a perfect circle. 
right? If, there, if I was, and in the past I tried to make this whistle all its hollow shape the way it is, I couldn't get it to whistle unless I could just imagine if the lower portion of the face is cut off, that's pretty much what's whistling. No. That's where the false wall is. Isn't it? Still, I knew I'm going to have trouble on this one. Maybe not. Stop so you made a mold from the face and then you put that other part on the back. This part yes. was added on. Okay. Yeah. Um, and a little story, like I said, I was looking through doll magazines, mm -hmm. and I didn't like any of the dolls because they're all flat-faced, and all, obviously this one was a little more ethnic, but the reason why I chose it, because it represented a little bit more of the Buddha idea to me. Mm -hmm. Cheeks full, you know, you see a squirrel, and I'm trying to do the baby, and the baby loaf kind of looking like kind of strong and uh, well-fed, and it's kind of serious, but yet innocent. I wanted the cheeks to be full, like full of life. Kind of the same way Buddha has a big belly because he's full of life, full of joy and happiness and food. Yeah. Why do you have one eye and you don't have the other eye? What's yeah. the purpose? What's the reason? You want the truth or yes. the art? Both. At one point, I was trying to maybe have it morph like from a gourd into a baby face, right? And then I went ahead and put another eye and if you don't do eyes right, they look cockeyed. <laughs> they look cockeyed. You've got to get both sides even, or if you've got to get an unevenness that still feels symmetrical. Um, case in point, um, some of our most handsome people are really quite symmetrical, even though they may be really exotic with huge cheekbones, but as long as they're even on both sides, for some reason, our primal brain sees it as like, oh, there's a handsome fella. That kind of thing, right? So if you ever see, you know, have you ever taken a picture? I'm sure everybody did this in high school, maybe. Take your picture, not high school, but a little later. Take a picture of your license and cut it in half and then reverse it. It doesn't look like you, mm -hmm. right? But it looks like you think, oh, I want to look like that because you just made yourself symmetrical. So that's kind of a handsome guy. How come my real picture is a little off? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, our primal instinct for breeding it looks for symmetry. And chiseled jaws and yeah, they did like, a, they did research on that survey that? Yeah. and they showed men a bunch of pictures of women and the one that everybody picked was someone that was symmetrical. So. Uh -huh. I also read a little something that's why I started finally. I was a late bloomer. I finally was able to grow a beard so I could make a chiseled beard, mm -hmm. right? Because I've got Prince Charles chin. Right? And there's no chin there. It's just a gullet, you know, that, uh, up to the lower, up to the lower jaw. Right? And always felt a little Gilligan and a little dorky. I go ahead and grow this thing, and all of a sudden, seriously, I ain't kidding you. It's like I don't, drink, I don't drink, but I can walk into bars. If I shave this, I walk into bars. The tough guy in there is like kind of pushing me around. I walk in there with a beard. For some reason, I get a little more like, okay, that guy, now it's back off of it. <laughs> God, this is on film. <laughs> level with a group of people who didn't call it intimate, but all of a sudden now I just realized, oh my god, worldwide. Uh, let's look up the whistle guy. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> let's hear him put his foot in his mouth. Oh, it's all good. When I was a kid, acrobatic feet, you know. Samson guy. Sam, can you do it? Can you put your legs over your head? When I was a kid, I used to put my legs, legs over my head, around my neck, and walk on my hands. I oh thought my I was gosh. special. <laughs> That's so scary. Well. Um, Mark, how thick are those walls? Or, what's that? Too thick, most likely. I'm going to have to thin stuff down. All right, and I've got to imagine this. I've got to imagine where the thickness truly is of this. And remember, I said a needle tool. Anybody got a needle tool handy? Here. We'll get you one. Ooh, a fancy wow, style. Fancy. Oh. <laughs> fly? Jeez. It's, a, it's a clay shark. Right? No. What? It's too thick. You need an answer. I'm trying to find where that back wall is. Right? Because if I try to put it over here, then I'll have too big of an aperture. And there is actually a true formula to this whole whistle thing. Um, it's called the vortex formula, but I don't like. How much was this? <laughs> How much was that? Eight bucks. 
Was it? Oh, it's a sort of replaceable. It just snapped out. You can replace it. Okay. Oh, nice. It folds down for safety. I know about where it is. Do me a favor, open that toolbox right there. Be careful, it's a trick. Jumping jack. Jack of the box. You should have got something in there. What's that? No, no, that would have been fun. Now, I wish this was a little more leather hard right now, but we'll see if we can get it to work. Um, dig through there and see if you can find me a slightly bigger um, drill bit. Well, although it's better always to start small than it is to go big. Like, what about Bob? Baby steps. Here's his step drill. You like how this is very organized? Yeah. He's even got nail polish. As you can see. Now, everything spreads out completely evenly when you dump it. Right. There we go. That's pretty big. What's that? That's no, that no. Because I do have a big, I do have a, a, a big piece here. Those of you who grab these, you're going to, once you hollow out the inside a little bit, you're going to want to move around a little bit with the other end. This is the other end. You also pack the, the upside. Uh, the, the reed part. I call it it's like a stationary reed. A reed's supposed to vibrate. I just call it the anvil. And people think Roadrunner. Ah, I got a problem. Uh -huh. See this right here? Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. I, I, I'm trying to go straight down the wall, but guess what? There's a little bit of space behind it. So I'll go through this. So just to be sure, I'm pulling this drill bit that way. Right? Just to make sure I have a wall that slopes down and doesn't go back and slopes down. So I just opened up this hole. See what I'm doing? I'm going this way with it. So this whole drill bit fits against this wall underneath here. So you're pulling not just on the top, but uh, What's that? along the whole surface of the tool that you have down in there? Even, even in the slope, as long as it, if it doesn't go back, even if it does goes down and then bumps in a little bit and then continues the slope, it'll kill the sand. You need a nice slope in there. Yeah, that's what I need. That's great to be tall. <laughs> Can you do me a favor? Look for another one of these that looks like I fashioned it off of a drill, off of a grinder. Careful little sharp stuff. Just dump it. It'll have like, it looks like a ball of um, wood at the end of it. I've actually made a mistake. I actually made that hole too oblong for the moment. Oh, there it is. How many people are there? Oh, wait, good. no, this is somebody else's. That's the word. So. How long is too long? Longer than you figure or something? Well, if it's too long, then you'll, you'll lose a lot of sound coming out. But I'm just readjusting that. The guys, the ones that work, tell me what's really going on. You see, it's like, as much as I think these are, this one was angled, it's not. And now it's actually more in that same direction with that one. I do wish it was a little bit stiffer. And because I do have thick clay there, I'm going to make a little bit of a channel, just so I can get things moving. Fashion you guys popsicle sticks. Those are the quick ones. Probably should have this hole a little bit nicer right now, but I want to get a hole through here first. Is that channel just so we get that sharp edge he was talking about? Yeah, it helps spread it open, and it helps. The oh, the channel. Yeah, because you know, I do need it to. Do you notice all these had a channel? Because quite frankly, they really were too thick. They were too deep, so I had to, I had to open up, open and spread it open, so that was acting truly as the top surface there. Oh. Okay. I tried something new. I tried waxing some of these pots. Because when you guys are using them, they start picking up moisture and then they become flexible. They want to stick inside. 
and I don't want them sticking. So, so if you've got clay dust around that's dry as you're doing this, pick up some clay dust off of the pops onto the popsicle stick just to keep it dry. I wish I had a little tiny camera. I can't what? Right. Now, one of the other things I do is I, I'll stick it all the way in. And so, because I need this little wedge right here to be pressed down and be a little flatter, because on the underside, it's probably got some junk, clay junk in there. So, push this, try to poke it up out of there and try to get it some. I'll tell you something about the slope on this in a second. You need that little channel also. If the air's going across something like that, it'll work. If the air's going across something that you think is channeled but still bulbs up as the air is passing through it and over and out, it won't whistle. So you either need it flat or curved. So I'm going to try to get this one curved. Yeah, that's right. You're talking about the outside surface, right? Yeah, I'm putting pressure up against that popsicle stick. And I've seen a lot of people do these so many different ways. Like I do, no right now. I'm gonna have to spread that. But the good thing about it is, is I've got it flat on the side that I can't see. And I still have. I can still tell that this area is bulging up instead of flat or curved down. And that piece is kind of This part I've usually taken my time to sit down, but sometimes I'll just whistle right off the bat. Because the cleaner I make it look for you, the more you guys will focus on how specific this little area needs to be. As you put that, like I said, it's too bad I don't have a, like a mirror or a camera. I need to make those little wall on the back side nice and flat and put the top of the stick back in. performance anxiety. Usually I could sit down on a chair and sit in the room. This one's a little off. No, I'm okay. <laughs> if I sit down then I'll just you and the mic is still right now. Now I'm actually blindly cleaning up on the inside a little bit where this the, this portion is, the wedge part, the flat part that splits it open, I, I, can, I just know that there's stuff above it and off to the side of it. Here I got these other tools. I'm trying to demonstrate just with the drill bit and the popsicle stick. So it becomes a little like surgery, actually. They're doing micro surgery. I have the popsicle stick there, but it's moving clay out instead of just spreading it. Then, once you think you've got a, oop, once you think you actually got a nice little aperture that's opening up and it's going to split across, you should be able to test by gently putting your popsicle stick in, 
let it ride the, the area that you gave it, the channel that you gave it through the mouthpiece. And if the top of the popsicle stick is right somewhere dead center with the other side right there, I think you caught that. It should whistle. I do have a little bit of a backdrop in here, which I'm not liking. That's the start. Now, the, the, you know that area I said that it can't go back and then come forward? I've got a little bit of a shelf there, so I'm going to let this dry up a little bit, and then I'm going to put clay right there and fill that little gap. So I can start using something like this, or the drill bit, and go in at an angle and slowly make that a little smoother inside there. And uh, I'm going to let it do some drying up. You guys go ahead and, and look, I bought you guys colored popsicle sticks. Ooh, yay. <laughs> no expense spares. Thank you. No, I'll take it. I can Was that one last part? Yeah. 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 Cavity, it might whistle less unless you have a really heavy angle. If you see all of the anvil, it should whistle anyway. All right? And then when you put a hole in there, you should have a larger spectrum of sound. I'm not quite sure. Does anybody know any poetry? No? <laughs> well, you know what? Usually I don't feel embarrassed doing this, but for now that I've gotten to know you, now I feel embarrassed doing it. <laughs> no, you're just fair Shakespearean. If anything, on the, on the intimate artistic level, it really does, like, you know how, like, the most abstract thing you're actually afraid and shameful to do in front of somebody for some reason you have some sort of like crit critic and editor in you right that's what art art's always trying to challenge our critic in us. and even me as being an artist i've always tried, I'm not going to do that and as a kid i used to be trying to be shocking and i think i still try to be shocking like i got to make it different so i want to i want to challenge that fear of being um, vulnerable to you or somebody else um, I don't know if anybody's ever read the book, The Artist's Way. It kind of talks about how um, being an artist is like walking up to a beautiful woman in the bar and saying, Hi, my name's Mark, and I don't know what you're going to get out of it, but yet you're still subjecting you know, your person. I want to be unique, different, and special, but you're also still asking to be accepted. So whenever you make art, it's mine, mine, mine. What do you think? You're kind of being a hypocrite a little bit, right? Kind of, what do you think? And the moment somebody's like, Oh, I don't like it, well, I don't like you, right? So you truly are showing your insides. You're trying to work with your insides. You're trying to, in my opinion, you're trying to not have a critic. At the same time, we all have a critic in it. So there's that battle, that abstract battle with art. So, strangely enough, sometime around this year in college, I never, even as much as I loved Halloween, I got to that point where I wasn't dressing up, but I loved Halloween. How come I'm not taking the time to do I don't know, ADD or just that? Uh, tired or lazy about it, see everybody dressed up, but at college everyone was having a competition at the art college, for, you know, there were people in fact that were coming up with big plumes and everything, I was like, do something, gotta do something, gotta do something, I'll do this, and I'll stop, let's hope I didn't dry this out too much. I may have dried it out too much. I might have to put my tie on before I choke myself. I'll probably slam myself to the ground. See how good that stretching technique comes in, guys? Yeah. <laughs>
ties a little long. We don't mind your money, <laughs> <your> man. <laughs> Remember, I'm going to be handing some people clay. This actually is like exhausting right now because we've yeah. been throwing the clay. And you're in the sun. i got to take a few breaths. Otherwise, I'll suffocate underneath. That's good. Different all the all the time. I've tried to save a couple, but because of the fashion and the way I'm throwing it around and twisting, they all crack and break. I'm hoping to get to the point where I can slide them off and put them down something as a. This one was done at a. Or actually, oh, this one was in my studio, a chest run. But I've done it for a couple exotic, uh, some place called um, uh, Indelible Ink, for a, a bunch of poets called Indelible Ink, and they. They go to a champagne and dessert bar, and they have a bunch of belly dancers and people doing poetry. And 
you know, of people having their stories, odd stories, and even a guy who's uh, uh, in the Smithsonian, American Indian, playing the violin, and he's got a long story about how everybody said, what the hell is an Indian playing the violin for? They should be playing flutes. Ha! <laughs> 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 um, and so they had me do this thing, and quite frankly, they, um, oh my god, they put so much twist. Bottom line, my little secret, I already told the melody. In the art world, they would, somebody would make a whole lot of sense out of this. So really, quite frankly, they're making sense out of nonsense. But it is fun. <laughs> but you can see as like, oh man, strut, if I had a tie, it would tie it in a little bit better. It's like, oh, the modern man making his image out of clay and the struggling and the suffocation. I'm actually suffocating under there. Did you hear me breathing hard? Yeah. 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 Was I wobbling a little bit? No. no. I no. felt like I was wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing I do is t make a make a mouth hold. And I think I've done better masks. I thought this one, I'm a little tired after today, so I'm just kind of swapping, swapping them. And then there's that slapstick comedy I've been beating myself up. I heard everybody laugh and I poked myself in the eye. I prefer Blue Lagoon. It's a new movie. <laughs> Dirty. I was a little dirtier before. What are you, you going to do it now? No. <laughs> my guy, he's going to take on the tradition of the <laughs> What are you doing? That. That. <laughs>